Welcome. Welcome to My Finance Teacher. Today we're going to talk about cash flow. And cash flow is basically movement of money in and out of a company. Cash inflows is, of course, movement of money into the company. We'll talk about the sources of cash inflow. And, of course, cash outflow is movement of money out of the company. Cash flow as a measure of a company performance is very, very important for a financial analyst. Perhaps even more important than profits. Although cash flow, the amount of money, the amount of cash that the firm can generate, is um, somewhat similar to profits, the amount of uh, returns that company can create, uh, there is a difference where cash flow only considers some, uh, let's say, a more or less real money, real cash generated by the business, whereas profits within the financial statements might include um, some, uh, let's say, uh, non-out-of-pocket costs, uh, some sort of imaginary costs, such as, let's say, depreciation. So there is a difference between cash flow and profits. And within financial statements, they are generally sitting in uh, different forms. You can find profits or net income at the bottom of the income statement. And uh, to look at the cash flows, you of course need to have a look at the cash flow statement. While talking about cash flows in this video, what we're mainly going to focus is how cash is generated from the company we have a bit of a factory on the image here. Using these assets, using the assets of the factory can generate cash. So we are going to have a look at uh, some of the details of that. And we're going to have a look at how cash is used after it's being generated. Basically, the money that the firm generates goes either to pay some of the creditors and the remaining amount of money basically goes to the owners of the firm whether it's in the form of dividends, which directly go into the pockets of the owners, or whether in the form of money reinvested back into the company growth, in which case, since the company still belongs to the owners, that money reinvested back into the company growth can be thought of as redistributed to the owners after paying off the creditors. So first, let's have a look at how cash is generated using the assets. So we're going to give a name to that concept, that's cash flow from assets, CFFA, since we're using the assets to generate cash. And basically, if you have some assets, how can you generate cash? One is through a normal operating activities. So just running the factory basically can generate some cash for you. And this will be taken into account by this OCF, operating cash flow. You could also generate cash by, um, well, simply selling the assets. Let's have a look at separately selling long-term assets because that kind of includes depreciation and selling the short-term assets separately, uh, which doesn't include depreciation in any of our formulas. So we're going to keep that one separate. Selling or buying long-term assets uh, will be taken into account within this formula by this net capital spending. That's basically the spending on uh, long-term assets. If we are spending on long-term assets, the amount of assets we have increases, and that's basically the opposite of selling. So let's have a negative sign here. And these sales of short-term assets will be taken into account by these changes in networking capital. We've mentioned networking capital in a recent video, link at the top of the screen right now. So a change in networking capital, if networking capital increases, the company would generally have more short-term assets, which is basically the opposite of selling those short-term assets to generate cash. So let's have a negative sign here as well. And I would like to highlight this formula. So if you were to choose only one thing to learn from this video, that's perhaps this formula. So we're going to consider these uh, three main ways of uh, generating cash using or by selling some of these assets. But of course, there are also other ways of generating cash, some uh, financing and investment activities. Uh, we're not going to uh, look at those in this video. Next, let's move this framed formula to the top to see some more details where operating cash flow as I said, is the amount of money that is generated from uh, regular uh, operating activities. So we can have a look at earnings before interest and tax. That's the earnings that the company makes by uh, just simply running the factory. 
The calculation of these earnings before interest and tax includes some costs which are not real out-of-pocket costs, such as depreciation. It's more or less an imaginary cost for which you don't actually pay with money out of your pocket. So let's add back depreciation here so that it cancels out with the negative depreciation inside the EBIT formula. And after subtracting taxes, we're going to get operating cash flow. Next, looking at longer term assets, let's say I have three desks in my office in uh, December at the end of the year. And I used to have two desks in my office in January at the beginning of the year. Plus, during the year, one of those desks was uh, basically broken down and uh, written off, thrown away. How many desks did I have to buy during that year to get from uh, two at the beginning, where one was broken later on, to a total number of three desks by the end of the year? Well, I had to buy two desks, and the formula for that is the amount of assets at the end of the year, which is three in our example, minus the amount of assets at the beginning of the year, which is two in our example, plus depreciation, let's say the breakage is that depreciation in our example, which is one. That's your formula for net capital spending. And a similar formula for uh, changes in networking capital, I'm gonna use this small triangle to denote changes, but uh, short-term assets do not have depreciation applied to them, so we can simply subtract the networking capital at the end of the year minus a networking capital at the beginning of the year, giving us the change for that year. And now let's uh, have a look at uh, this example with the balance sheet over here, assets and liabilities for 2019 and 2020. Remember, balance sheet is just a snapshot of what was going on in the company at the moment in time. So that's, let's say, on the 31st of December 2019 and 31st of December 2020. So we're going to have a look at cash flow generated by the company during 2020. That's the period between December 2019 and December 2020. For that period, for the year of 2020, we also have our income statement. Starting with the upper rating cash flow, as we know, we just plug in the earnings before interest and tax, plus depreciation and minus taxes. Let's pause for a second to show the cell references, and that gives us 547 for operating cash flow. Net capital spending is the next fixed assets at the end of the year, that's December 2020, minus net fixed assets at the beginning of the year, that's the very end of December 2019, plus all of the depreciation during that year 2020. Again, let's pause for a second to show the sale references, and that gives us $130 spent on capital spending, meaning that we've actually bought more long-term assets for the company. Hence, that is going to decrease our total amount of cash generated by the firm. And for networking capital, let's have a look at the difference between current assets in uh, 2020 and current liabilities in 2020. That's the networking capital at the end of the period, minus that same difference for December 2019. That's the networking capital at the beginning of this period. And the change in networking capital gives us positive 330 meaning that our networking capital has actually increased, again, reducing the cash generated by the firm. And the cash flow from assets is simply operating cash flow minus net capital spending minus changes in networking capital, giving us 87. So here's one relatively simple example for you. If you want me to clarify anything, you're welcome to ask your questions in the comments down below. And now, having considered how companies generate cash, let's have a look at the uses of cash. All the cash that has been generated is uh, paid back to the creditors whom the company borrows from, and, and the rest of the cash might go to the owners in the form of dividends. Now, when we look at the creditors, uh, there might be a two-way payments. On, on one hand, the company might repay some of the debts, but on the other hand, the company might uh, take on new debt. So the actual cash flow to creditors would be sort of a net of these two opposite movements of cash. Same with the owner's side, dividends go to the owners from the company and the new shares issued whenever they are sold to the shareholders, that's a movement of cash from the shareholders back into the company. 
these two movements of cash are in the opposite direction. So, so the actual cash flow to shareholders is sort of a net of uh, these two opposite flows of cash. And uh, these two being the uses of cash, uh, they should generally also be equal to the total cash flow generated by the company on one hand side, cash flow from assets, and all of that cash flow generated is uh, generally used to pay back the creditors and reward the shareholders. Next, let's have a look at more details of the cash flow to creditors and cash flow to shareholders. On one hand, we repay the interest. That's a cash flow going to the creditors, but we might take new borrowing. So we'll look at the difference between these two. And the cash flow to shareholders is the dividends paid to them, but the company might issue new shares and sell them to uh, new shareholders. That's cash flowing the opposite side from shareholders into the company. Next, let's uh, go back to our example in this Excel file, where the cash flow to creditors is the interest expense or the interest paid during 2020 minus uh, extra borrowing during that year, which is the difference between long-term debts at the end of 2020 and the long-term debts at the beginning of 2020 or in December 2019. That gives us a positive 24, meaning that the company repaid more of the cash back to the creditors compared to its uh, new borrowing. And for cash flow to shareholders, we'll look at the dividends minus new shares issued and the paid-in capital, the, the difference between this number in December 2020 and 2019. That gives us a positive 63 meaning that the repayments of dividends in 2020 exceeded the new capital paid from shareholders whenever new shares were bought by them. And in uh, this particular example, these two uses of cash do sum up to our cash flow from assets. I hope this has been useful for another quick example, mostly about cash flow from assets, operating cash flow, net capital spending, and changes in networking capital. Have a look at a quick video linked at the top of your screen right now. For now, have a nice day and bye-bye.